Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com, and this is your Photo News Fix. This fix is brought to you by the inaugural My Roadcast competition with $150,000 in amazing prizes. Did you hear that? Not just prizes, but amazing prizes, which is even better. Now here's how you get entered. Dan, Dan, take some notes because I want to win this one. Create a one to two minute podcast on any subject, upload it to the contest page, and finally tell your friends to vote for you. Now what show topic are you going to choose? Because I'm not going to tell you mine. For more information and to get entered, head on over to bit.ly slash roadcastfro. And good luck! Did you wake up this morning and check your Flickr only to realize that almost all of your images were deleted? No? Me either, because what's Flickr anyway? Back in November 2018, Smug Mug, who bought Flickr, probably for as little as a bag of baseballs and a medium pizza, announced that starting February 5th, 2019, free accounts with more than a thousand images and videos would start to see their oldest images or videos deleted first until they were below the thousand images. Flickr says 97% of their free account holders have less than a thousand images stored, which tells me people don't care about Flickr or use it like they used to. If you're one of the 3% of accounts at risk of having your images deleted, consider purchasing a pro account, which amongst more storage gives you a sweet ass pro badge. Now if that sweet ass pro badge doesn't put you over the edge, well, I don't know what will. Do you still flicker? Likes, likes, likes. We want your likes. Let's see if we can get 5,000 likes and comments on this video because if it does, I will give away 10 fro pack ones. Remember when Kodak stopped producing 35 millimeter film and hipster screams around the world could be heard? Well, if you forgot what that sounds like, here's a refresher. Well, in 2018, were you excited? I'm excited. When Kodak Alaris brought back Ektachrome 35 millimeter film. That's what I thought. I wasn't either, but I'm sure hipsters everywhere rejoiced with a fat-free, gluten-free, sugar-free, GMO-free, fair trade latte with soy milk. I get a double shot Back in 2012, when Kodak filed for bankruptcy, it owed $2.8 billion to the UK Kodak Pension Plan, or KPP. And no, Dan, not OPP. That was a cheap joke, but use it anyway. Get out with OPP. Well, to settle part of the debt, the KPP, still not OPP. Yeah, you know paid $325 million to take over Kodak imaging businesses, which included film, paper, and chemicals. And in 2018, Kodak Alaris succeeded in bringing Ektachrome film back to life. It's alive! But is all that about to change as Inside Imaging has published a report stating that Kodak Alaris is now shopping itself around for $34 million. Dan, I shot myself around on the corner of and why would they do that, you may be asking? Because they are still $2.7 billion short from the time they inherited that massive Kodak debt back in 2012. Can we get a moment of silence for Kodak, please? All right, thank you, that moment is now over. Inside Imaging reports that the business has been up for sale since January of 2018, and that there's potential buyers who are interested. No shit, potential buyers means they're interested, because they're potential. They wouldn't be potential if they weren't interested, all right? You know who that buyer should be, by the way? Fuji. Seriously, Fuji should buy it up just like Coke should have bought up Pepsi when they had the chance. I hope someone ends up buying the business because I'm not sure I could survive hearing this scream over and over again. First time ever. And finally, is Cannon back? back again. Cannon's back. Cannon's back, Cannon's back. Over the past few days, there's been two pretty big rumors floating around. First rumor is pegging, Dan, don't get excited, a new entry-level full-frame mirrorless camera with some interesting specs. Keep in mind, this is just a rumor, but rumors that are worthy of speculating on. Canon Rumors is reporting that this camera will weigh in at only 400 grams, which would make it the lightest full-frame mirrorless camera ever made. Now that would be even lighter than the Canon SL2 DSLR that is a crop sensor camera. They also said it will have a side articulating screen, 24 megapixel sensor with no touch bar, five frames a second shooting with ISO going from 100 to 40,000. You will also have dual pixel AF along with IAF in continuous focus as well 
as video. That's right, they're saying that it will have IAF for video, which would be a massive deal. The battery is reportedly the LPE17. Who the f names these batteries anyway, Dan? Which is the same battery as the M50, which does not exactly have a lot of OJ. I mean, juice. Too soon. It's never too soon. They're also saying that the price might be $1,300, which would be absolutely insane for a full frame mirrorless camera. If all I knew was the next EOS R was going to be an entry level camera, yeah, I'd probably rip on it because, well, I'm good at ripping on things. Don't mind if I do. But if the price is $1,300, it might just be the camera that will cause some people to do a double pressure. Double take. Continuing on with the rumors, it's being reported that Canon will be announcing five new RF lenses in a matter of weeks. There's the 85 1.2, 24 to 70 2.8 IS, 70 to 200 2.8 IS, 24 to 240 f4 to 6.3 IS, and a 15 to 35 f2.8 IS. Now, if I had to guess, the 24 to 240 would be the kit lens paired with the new entry level camera. Based on the leaked images, the 70 to 200 2.8 looks like it lacks some length, but what it lacks in length, it makes up in girth. That's what she said. It looks super compact based on the size of the tripod collar foot, and if that is the real lens, it's looking pretty good. The lens that I find most interesting is the 15 to 35 2.8 IS. Now, I don't fully get the range, though I do know that they had a 16 to 35 that was super popular, but I could see a 14 to 24 or maybe another 11 to 24, but a 15 to 35, it's kind of curious being that it overlaps a 24 to 70 2.8. Now that's the same thing that people have been dealing with all along with a 16 to 35 2.8 and a 24 to 70 2.8 personally rather have the ones I just mentioned. Could the rumors be wrong and the 15 to 35 is actually an F2 and not a 2.8? Probably not, that would be a pretty big lens, but Canon's already done it once. Nonetheless, it looks like Canon might be dropping loads of new glass on us very soon. The only thing missing, pro mirrorless cameras for those pro mirrorless lenses. And there you have it, that's your photo news fix this time around. To check out the last fix, go ahead and click on the screen right here. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And that's where I'll leave it. Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com. See ya.